is the worst year for a lot of us for our mental as well as physical health. So joining us this morning is best-selling author, coach, and fitness expert, Lisa Goldenthal. Hello and welcome, I'm Lisa G, your host. You're at the top of your game, yet the game is changing faster than ever. Strategies that got you here aren't the ones that'll keep you here. The pressure is relentless and the fear of obsolescence looms large. That's why I'm here. Welcome to the new podcast series, Disrupted. How to be gritty and unlock performance. This is your chance where I sit down with today's tops in business, mindset, wellness, and success to help you master disruption and thrive. Thanks for coming and I'll see you soon. Welcome to the Whole CEO with Lisa G podcast, where we bring you inspiring stories from industry trailblazers. Today, we have the founder and CEO of Natterjack Irish Whiskey. He left a successful career as a London trader to create Natterjack, blending Irish whiskey and American whiskey techniques. Launched in 2019, Natterjack is now a global brand expanding rapidly in the U.S. market. For today's guest, Natterjack is more than whiskey. It celebrates Irish hospitality and fearless perseverance. Join us as we explore his journey and vision. And now let's welcome to the podcast, Aiden Mahegan. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Lisa. Thank you for having me. I'm so thrilled to have you. Let's jump right into your story of resilience, one of my favorite topics, and fighting for your company. What was the biggest threat your company faced um, with aggressive investors in VC firms? Yeah, so um, so we launched in 2019, right? And that was an amazing year. By the end of it, we were in six global markets and four US states, right? And we just, the world was our oyster. And I kind of, I'd done it this 10 day trip in five US markets. One we had, which we opened on that trip. The other were the markets we were in. And I realized, you know, we needed to get out here to tell our story and to, and to meet, meet the, meet the people who would drink the whiskey. There's a, there's a really interesting aspect of American personalities, right? Of um, which is they love the entrepreneur story. They want to hear more, right? They, right. they need meet someone who's who's built a business. And that business can be, you know, um, a tiddlywinks factory to um, metal mining to whiskey, right? But it's it's the entrepreneurial spirit is so deeply entrenched in the American psyche that I just realized that telling my story from Ireland wasn't really going to. It wasn't a way to amplify. It wasn't a way to tell enough people, to meet enough people. So I came back from that trip and I said to my wife, I was like, we need to get in the States. This is late 2019. She's like, let's do it. Let's go. COVID hit. Everything shut down. And, um, and we got approached by a VC about halfway through 2010. And they said, look, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll take, you know, 45% stake in your business for $5 million. And none of this is private, by the way. It's, it all got read out in the papers. But um, right. so uh, it's uh, for $5 million. And that wasn't money coming to me. That was to grow the brand. And I was like, amazing. Global hospitality is in free fall. And now these guys want to invest to take our, take our brand. This to is the in 2020? This is in 2020, yeah. Yeah, that's why I thought I wanted to clarify. Go ahead. Yeah, sorry. Yes, that was halfway through July 2020. We got that offer, right? And so we were like, okay. let's go, right? Let's get it done. Right. So we tried and tried to get that done. And by November of 2021, the deal still hadn't closed, which as anyone who's ever done one of these deals knows that there's no deal at that stage. And so right. and so uh, we, we ended up, well, I ended up kind of saying goodbye to the deal and not the nicest way. I used some curse words in an email that once again got read out in court. It wasn't my finest moment, but it was it was a pretty stressful time. We couldn't grow the brand during COVID and we were, you know, we were left in a very tough position. So that forced us into an Irish version of Chapter 11 bankruptcy. Now, bankruptcy protection, right? So what it does is you come up with a scheme of arrangement for your creditors and then you find a way to restructure the business to take it forward. It's, right. it's not more complex than that, except in Ireland, Anyone can bid on your bill. It's like a divorce where anyone can bid on your children. If you go into examinership in Ireland, anyone, you, Jameson, uh, uh, the British government, anyone can bid on Natterjack. And so wow. we went in for the protection and two other bidders emerged. One was the VC who'd offered us back in uh, July of 2010, uh, 2020. And another was a was a partner party who we never found out about. And so they all put their bids in for, for us to exit. And we put our bid in. 
And um, we ended up winning it by by fifty thousand. We um, wow. we we had investors lined up, ready to go. And then eight days before it closed, without getting into too much details, eight days before it closed, the major investor pulled out. And so I had, and I, my wife is eight months pregnant, uh, nine months pregnant at this stage. And she said, you know, she's like, right, look, you need to go on. Like this is over. And I was like, it's not over. So I was like, I have eight days. And then I got speaking to John Green who um is our you know one of our major investors and uh, one of our major shareholders and you know my my mentor and he said look you know if you work with me for eight days myself dale and tim maybe we can do something here so we worked i mean i don't think i slept for those eight days it was quite a quite a wild time at the end of the eight days we had the capital to put our bid in place in escrow so they'd actually come up they'd transferred the capital and we were ready to go and we won by fifty thousand. And um, so, so not a lot in the scheme of a, a five million investment um, over over that period of time. So it's amazing. It's the most amazing few days. So we, we very nearly lost everything because we were at that stage living with my wife's parents um, in on their farm in Suffolk. And um, we were out of money. And when I say out of money, I mean, I, at one point I was outside the supermarket and I had 23 euros in my in my bank account. And Faye had a list of 46 things on the shopping list. And I was like, there's no way... There's just no way all these things are 50 cents. So I was like, what am I going to do? And I remembered I had an old betting account that had 79 euros in it. I got, I transferred that out that I'd forgotten about and I went home. And so that was how bad it had gotten. Now we had, it was, yeah, it was rough. Then we exited. And part of the deal was that Faye and I come over to the States and do what we said we'd do in 2019. So we exited examinership. We'd won. Three days later, my daughter Artie was born and she's wow. amazing. And then two months later, we were on a plane to the US with the kids, visas, house rented. And this is the house we're in at the moment in Austin. Like that's only, honestly, it's only two years and five, four days ago, this all happened. So it's not long. Yeah. Well, your story is so amazing to me. You know, I started this podcast in 2020 because it was hard for me. I had to totally pivot and I wasn't the only one. So I started launching these stories about resilience and grit and your story really resonated with me. I've been there, you know, where you're just, you believe so passionately in a project and you don't have the money. And, and I love that you didn't give up and you had the family support. So how important is it to have family support when you're doing the crazy things that no one in the world believes in, because they're like, what are you nuts? Yeah, it's such, it's such a great question. It's so important. Like, as, as I mentioned, we were living with Faye's parents and um, and they, you know, we moved in for two weeks while we sorted out a deal. And eight months later, we're still there, right? And they're like, uh, oh, like, and then, you know, then we're still there. And then all of a sudden we're moving to America. They must have thought we were absolutely crazy. And then it's, right. you know, and it's my parents who equally were amazing and put us up in Dublin. And then, and, you know, my mom and dad, every time we, you know, we'd run out of cash or the next thing, they always, what they said, and it, it's in, it was amazing. It's like, what do you need? And like, we... We can't write you a check for a million dollars, but like, what do you need? Do you need money for for groceries? What we call groceries in Ireland, but like to go to the supermarket, right? right? And one time we were living in an Airbnb in Wicklow, kind of going from not even, we weren't being paid. So it was all very, what can we sell? And mum would arrive down with a boot full of, uh, you know, some steaks and some chicken and some potatoes. And it was like, yeah, because they, they believed, right? And that was the thing, they they never lost sight of, of what we were trying to do. And they also understood that the lead indicator that we were onto something, first of all, the business was a success prior to COVID, right? And then it was, as you, as you know, right, it got really tough in COVID. But yeah. if someone's trying to take something off you, it doesn't have no value, no matter how much they tell you it has no value, right? Because they were killed telling me. They were like, oh, you have nothing. This brand isn't worth hell, you know? And you're like, well, why then are you trying to take it off me? You know, just leave me with it. Right. But no, because they knew they knew we had something. And look, getting a product to market is very hard. Getting a product to market that sells is even harder. And then we'd done both of those things before COVID. We just we basically lost the, the the dressing room with the people who they didn't believe that we could take it to the next level. But what you know, revenge is a is a dish best served cold. And now we're in twenty U.S. states. We're in nineteen global markets. We'll do thirty thousand cases this year. Um, it's absolutely amazing. So it's um, it turns out, well, nobody hates to say I told you so, but we were we did have a product. We had a structure that, but COVID put us in a tight spot. So it's been amazing. Well, I love your belief. I think it all starts with belief. 
and you had the proven track record of success going into COVID, which just threw all of us out of our game. Like everything that used to work didn't work. But because you persevered is why I was really super excited to talk to you. And I want to talk to you a bit about innovation too, because you came to market with something completely different. So you were blending traditional Irish whiskey making and American aging methods. So why don't you talk to us about what challenge did you face in production process and how did you um, overcome it? Yeah, so so I I don't have a background in 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 the drinks industry, right? So I didn't spin out of Perno Ricard and, and start this. As you as you mentioned, I was a trader, right? I didn't know anything. I actually didn't have a favorite whiskey. I didn't have a favorite Irish whiskey. I did have a favorite bourbon. And I love the versatility and uh, and some of the innovation going on in bourbon. I was like, well, I'm Irish. Like maybe I could do something here in the Irish space. And there was no one really doing anything at that stage. That was kind of 2016. And um you know, we came up with Natterjack, we put the toad on the bottle, all that sort of stuff. And then we kind of went off. Um, actually, I'll tell you a funny story, which I'm not, not, I'm pretty sure I'm not supposed to tell, right? So I went to my first ever show to try and raise um, finance for the business because I knew I needed money to, to buy it. And so I knew what I wanted my flavor profile to be. So I went to this show and I poured a half a bottle of Jameson and a half a bottle of Breckenridge rye into a bottle with a toad on it. And I went to the show and said, this is the branding and this is the kind of whiskey that I want to produce. So I didn't tell any lies, but I was standing there with what was, yeah, <laughs> pretty, uh, pretty large fake it till you make it moment. And people were like, this could be really good whiskey. Like, do you think you can produce it? And I was like, yeah, I, it turns out we were able to produce. And that's kind of where the flavor profile came from. Um, uh-huh. And um, but we, what I, what I really wanted to do was grow the category, right? So I, I knew that if I called it Aiden Megan's whiskey and I brought out a 12 year old single malt, you and I wouldn't be sitting here today, right? There's just right. no one, That's right? That's been done before. A hundred percent. And there's no, there's no, there's no reason for that brand to survive. But I was like, well, what if, what if, right? I don't care about the, the old guy at the bar who I've already lost when I put a toad in the bottle. What if I say it doesn't matter to me? It doesn't matter to me that he's not gonna like my spirit. What if I say I want a 25 year old gin drinker to come across who who doesn't like brown spirits or finds brown spirits intimidating? What what if I go after them from a positioning, from a flavor and from a brand perspective? Like, let's do that. Let's, let's, Let's make an aspirational brand that's not Ferraris and castles. Let's make an aspirational brand that is, you could do this because I'm not a genius, right? And if if I can do it, so can you. And there's a, there's, there's a, the aspirational part of this is the journey, right? You've got a good idea, go and give it a shot because we'll be a long time dead. And uh, if you look back at the end of your career and you haven't taken that shot, I think it's a, I think it's a sad day. And that's the kind of aspirational part of Nader Jack because I think there's lots of business opportunities where, where people, People don't go after it all in and then it fails. And, and so that's why I quit my job, right? I, I quit my job. I sold my house. I went on this journey to create Natterjack because I was like, if I have an out, if I'm one foot and one foot in, one foot out, I'm all out. So I need to take it to the end. And I remember um, you talk about resilience. I, I believed every day throughout this process, except for one day in this Airbnb in Wicklow in Ireland. And Faye said to me, can you win? And I don't, I'm not a crier. But I did. I, I think I shed a tear and I said, I don't know if I can. And that was the only, and, and she said, well, let's take a look at the black book of people who said they wanted to invest. And you go and you contact all 60, 80, 100, whatever it is, the people who said they were into go and contact all and go and see them. And I was like, OK. And then there was this moment where uh, I sent an email to a to a couple I'd met in a bar. I know I'm rambling here a bit, but um, but Katie and Chris, uh, who I'd met in the Stag's Head in 2019, they loved the story and I got on really well with them. And I sent an email to Katie because she'd asked how how was everything going. Katie's uh, Katie's an investor from um, Arizona, and um, she said uh, how's everything going. And I sent a pretty open, not good email. And she said, look, we invest in businesses like yours all the time. Please send me your deck, and when can I see you? So I worked on the deck all night. I sent it and then uh, like, uh, and we had no money. And I was like, I'm buying a thousand dollar plane, round trip plane ticket to Arizona to go see Katie. And I went and spent kind of four days talking, talking investment, talking life. Cause you gotta bear in mind, I'd only met them for an hour in the Stag's Head in Dublin. And they said, look, we're in now go and find more people to be in. Oh, and they God. are still major investors of ours. And it's, uh, it's just an inc- like just so many things like like I came off that flight back home. And I was like, I think I've saved the business starting to Faye. And she's like, this is just incredible. It was worthwhile. And um, 
yeah, but that was that was on that was only one of the ups and downs. The whole thing took like nine months and was um was was difficult but amazing. And it's it's changed me as a person, hundred percent. Like I'm um I am more driven for this for the success of this business than I was at the start. I think I think it's it if if there was an easy exit, I would have taken it back before if someone said, Look, we like your brand and here's a bit of money. But now I want to I want a truly global brand. I want uh, a house call and I want to be the person that leads that into the future. And, and I've, I'm loving every day, no, even the bad days. Like, And there's loads. Don't get me wrong. You get funding, then you've got to hit targets. You don't hit targets, you've got to explain. But it's always positive. And every meeting we go to, we we try and bring the energy to that meeting, right? Because there's, no, there's only two ways. There's only two people at a meeting. There's people bringing and there's people taking. And so we bring as much energy as we can to every meeting we go into. And we're seeing the fruits of that now. It's been brilliant. Well, congratulations on all of your success, Aiden. I mean, there's so much to unpack there, but it's a really short show. I just really yeah. love the fact that you have a great wife that saw your vision, bought into the vision. I love the fact that you go into meetings, bringing the energy because everything is energy, in my opinion. And you can't go in there, letting people see the fear. And I love the way... Fear didn't hold you back because it holds so much and so many people back from pursuing a crazy, dream, big, hairy, audacious goal. Do you have any final wisdom bombs on being unstoppable for our audience? Um, I think you, I think you got to go and you got to go and be all in. And I mean that in every aspect of your life, right? When you're playing with your kids, your phone has to be down. When you're on a date with your wife, you shouldn't be scrolling on your phone, right? When you're setting up a business. Don't hedge, go after it because you, you'll find out quicker when you're all in than if you're half in, half out. And if it's not going to work, well, then you gave it a shot, but you got to be all in. All in and no plan B. I love it. Aiden. No plan B. <laughs> a, 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 Megan. A, Megan, that's it. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm bad at names. Anyhow, Aiden, Megan, where can people find that or Jack and more of your amazing energy? Total Wine and More in the US um, on Natterjack on our website, natterjack.com. And if you use the code Aiden Special, you get a discount. Um, and then in we're in a lot of regional um, retailers as well. So Specs in Texas, uh, Twin Seagull in Texas, Binny in, um, Binny's in, um, in Illinois and ABC in Florida. So yeah, we're, we're across the nation. Aiden, Megan, Natterjack, thanks for being a great guest on the show. Thanks, Lisa.